So, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today in the book club for Mastering Shiny. Uh, today we're going to cover chapter six, layout themes and HTML. And all of me will lead the discussion. So, yeah, go ahead. You can start. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for the introduction. So, today we'll be looking at uh, chapter six of the Mastering Shiny book, which is about uh, layouts, themes, and also HTML. So for the prerequisite of this chapter, we need to first of all load uh, the, my, the Shiny, and also we look at the BSLIP package because the BSLIP package contains some bootstrap theme in which we can use in customizing uh, the UI uh, of the Shiny app. So we are also going to be looking at how uh, we are going to transform the convert the shiny code into what HTML how shiny uh, is able to convert those code in which we are using to design the UI of the app uh, into what HTML. So, so that so for 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 the learning objective uh, of this chapter, uh, we are going to learn about creating raw HTML using R. We are also going to learn about HTML elements such as attributes, classes, content, and also we are going to look at the Cascadia style sheet, which is CSS for styling uh, the UI of our Shiny app. So we are also going to explore the Bootstrap front end toolkits because I think uh, the, from what the, the, the default uh, Bootstrap uh, which Shiny uses is Bootstrap 4, but we are also going to learn uh, how to use maybe, I think Bootstrap 3, sorry for that. We're also going to learn how to use maybe Bootstrap 4 or the latest, uh, which is at uh, Bootstrap 5 using the BSLIP uh, package. Uh, we are also going to look at Shiny produces single page application. So uh, that is a default Shiny app in which we are creating. It always have a single page. So, but there are ways in which we can customize it using multiple uh, page layouts, such as different uh, top set panel and also looking at uh, different type of uh, nav navigation bar, adding different type of uh, navigation bar uh, into the UI of the Shiny app. Uh, so that is basically uh, what we'll be looking at uh, in our discussion uh, uh, this for today. So I think here they mentioned some resources which might be very useful to us uh, when we are learning Shiny. They talk about uh, the first, which is the away some Shiny extensions. Uh, this link contain uh, all the extension uh, packages uh, uh, relating uh, uh, to the Shiny. They also talk about uh, the Shiny application uh, layout guide. Uh, this is about uh, the guides. Uh, in which we can get uh, for Shiny. So they also look at the Mozilla Developer Network. In this site, we can learn about intro to HTML, which is a hypertext uh, markup language. We also have CSS first steps and also uh, the website passing uh, figures. So these are links to uh, very useful uh, resources in which we can use uh, to improve our, our knowledge about uh, the Shiny. They also recommend this book, uh, The Outstanding Shiny User Interface, uh, which is a very uh, good book in which we can uh, use the concept and knowledge in which we gain in this book uh, to design a very robust uh, Shiny user interface. So, but they recommended uh, chapter one, chapter five, six, and seven of this book that we should go through this chapter. Uh, they also look at some packages and tools. So we have the Bootstrap, um, which is the BSLIP. We also have the SAS, uh, which we can also use to style uh, our app. Uh, some of other packages, we look at the HTML tools for building raw HTML. We also have SAS uh, for building CSS using SAS rules, not mentioned in, but this uh, is not mentioned in the book. Uh, we have BSLIP which handles working with Bootstrap. We also have Thematic, which is also a very good package in which once we have used uh, the BSLIP to style the UI of, of our Shiny app, 
But in the server side, we can have some plots, some visualization. Uh, so in order uh, for us to make sure that this visualization in which we are creating with maybe with ggplot2, we can be based R in order for us to ensure that these uh, plots uh, receive the same styling in which we have applied to our UI, we need to use this uh, thematic uh, package. So we just uh, have to call the thematic function in the server, then it's going to capture all the BSLIP team in which we have supplied to the UI, it's going to apply those team directly to the plot. I think we are going to see that uh, in our discussion, so they also recommend we look at uh, shiny semantic, uh, shiny mobile, and shiny material, and also shiny uh, dashboard. So those are uh, all the resources uh, in which they do recommend. So let's dive in uh, into the main part. Uh, so this part we talk about under the hood, what is going on under the hood. Uh, a typical web app, shiny web app, in the browser, which is the front end, which uh, we can all see, we have a default .html file, which defines the content. We have a .css file, which defines the style, because this CSS file is what we use to style the UI of the app. We also have JavaScript, which handles interactivity. So, but on the server side, which is the back end, we have requests received from the client. So as the client is sending this request and is going to receive this request, we have R performs computation based on those requests. So R is going to compute and it's going to send responses to the clients. So those responses in which Shiny is sending back to this client, uh, we have, that is what we can, we, the client receiving it maybe in form of outputs, which can be visual, it can be text, and here we have hypertext markup language, so which is uh, 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 the default HTML of every shiny app. So, and in order for us to see it, if you go to view source, we can use inspect open developer tool. So when I go back uh, here, okay, so I hope you are all seeing my house studio. I think I'm sharing, I can call yes. shiny. Yeah, yes, we can. We can just say shiny app. I can just use the snippets. Okay. I start, I start, I run. I just start a default app. Then I push it back to the browser. I push this app. To my browser. This is a default shiny app. There is no UI. I have not put any code. I can go to inspect the elements. So when I inspect the element, we can see that, that this is just a raw. Sorry, sorry, Lua Femi, your network seems to be weak. Is it for the your, your internet connection? Oh, yes, I thought it was my internet. <laughs> sorry, Lua Femi. All the HTML tag, yeah, we have some, we have some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah he is connected, I thought. I thought it was my internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's wait. Yeah, see if he reconnects. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, so sorry about that. My connection is so poor today. I don't know why. Okay, Share. don't worry. Don't worry. Can you continue with the presentation? Yes, yes. Okay, okay so perfect. I think so I think I have shown how we can uh, look at the developer tools in uh, R Studio, how we can see the default HTML file for our shiny app. So we can just see the opening tags. We can see that it is an HTML. We can see the different tags, the head, the opening tags. We can see the title, the page title. Then we can see the closing uh, diff, which is the HTML. So, but they also discussed that we can write HTML with shiny uh, using this package called HTML tools. So how do we do that? Yeah, we have a UI, okay? We have Shiny, so we are calling the float page uh, from within our namespace and we are assigning it to the object called uh, UI. So when we use cat function, which is from base R, then we say as dot character, we pass in the UI, okay? So when we pass in uh, this uh, UI, uh, we can see that it generates, it generates it generates the HTML uh, code in which uh, we can we can pass the HTML code that is for the UI. We can also use this syntax here. We have shiny render page. We pass in the UI. Uh, when we say render page, uh, the UI we can see the page that is is a HTML. We can see the HTML code uh, for that page. Uh, we can also do this uh, syntax here. We have shiny, we have float page, which is UI with raw HTML. So we have HTML tools. So we call HTML within the HTML. We say this should be, we want to run it in R. So within quotes, we pass in that HTML text that we have above. We can pass it in, we close, we close here. Okay, and we close this. Then we have our text inputs here. We have a name. Uh, what is your name? We also close that. So when we now call cat as dot character, uh, we pass in the UI with raw HTML. It will give us uh, the raw HTML code for. Uh, we can also do this syntax here. Uh, yeah, uh, shiny float page, h1 header. This is a heading class, my class. We have tags, uh, uh, u, l. Then we have tags, l1, which is uh, first bullet. This is second bullet. We have some text inputs, input ID, and also label. So when we now use cards, we can see that we can we will get uh, the actual the actual HTML code back. So what about the CSS part of this? We can also use, uh, isn't covered in, in the chapter, but it's but links are, are what provided. So for the CSS, I think there is a chapter, there, is, there are some few chapter in, in, the, in the outstanding uh, user interface with Shiny, in which we can, that they do cover about uh, the Cascadia style sheets. We can use this, the tricks in which we gain uh, about CSS. We can use it in styling uh, the, the UI of our Shiny app because they do explain that maybe we are working in a spe specific organization and each of this organi the organization in which we are working on, we are trying to develop a Shiny app for this organization. Uh, we need to style the app based on the team of that organization. Uh, I think uh, they discuss in the book that styling this app is, is a trick in which we need to learn to improve our skill in developing uh, a more robust shiny app that we should spend some time in styling this app to suit uh, the uh, the new ads, uh, they do this, explain that we can maybe uh, we want to pass in some CSS. We need to create this folder called www. Okay, within that folder, we can store our style.css in that folder, which we within that folder, we can define several 
uh, CSS in which we can use it, styling the app, like here they have dot my class. They said all the color in which you want to use in the app should be red. All the text color uh, should be red. Right. Then how do we mention, how do we reference this in the shiny app? Uh, they do this explain that we should not make reference with dots www, but rather we should go straight and call the style of CSS. So what we call style of CSS, shiny will understand that this style of CSS file uh, lives where it lives in the www uh, folder. So it's going to pick that style. It's going to apply uh, Which uh, we are developing. I think this is just a raw example in which they did here, where we, they have text, they have the CSS file. Uh, this is the style of CSS file style the UI uh, of the Shiny app. So I don't know if there are any questions before we move uh, to the next part. Not from my part. I just wanted to let you know that the connection is failing. So your audio is failing sometimes. But that last part, that last part we couldn't. Oh, he's connected. <laughs> yeah, quite unfortunate today for him. Yes. Let's hope he can connect again. Let me check his luck. Yeah, my connection is too poor today. I don't know what to yeah, do. Yeah, quite unfortunate. But yeah, if you can reconnect and we proceed then. Okay, I was asking if there are any questions before we proceed to the next part. Not any question from Not you. from my side, yeah. Uh, so here we look at uh, Bootstrap and Team. So I think Shani uses a uh, Bootstrap toolkit for styling uh, the apps. So I think the default uh, Shani app it uses a uh, Bootstrap three. Uh, but boost, uh, if we are using the Boost BSL package, we can specify maybe we need uh, Boost. We can specify that we need Boost Watch Bootstrap four or Bootstrap five, uh, which is uh, the most uh, let. Uh, recent ones, so we can use the BSL package just as they explained. So we need to use BSL package. We, we didn't go, we say we have the BS underscore team. Uh, we can say the background color should be this. The foreground color should be this. The primary color, we can choose a color, but the default is null. Secondary color, is, it can be null success. So color for success, we can specify that. For warning, so so we can also pass in the best fonts. Yeah, they are using list, BS lib, fonts, goggles. They are using the Google font, Pacifico, and local is true. They also have the sans, sans serif. They also have code fonts and also heading fonts. So these are all uh, default fonts. So yeah, they were using uh, Boost Watch team and sand, uh, sandstone. So then we use team in the UI. So this is how we can apply uh, the team to the UI. So we just pass in this, we pass in the best fonts. Uh, then in the server function, uh, yeah, we have flood page uh, team, which is team dark. And then we say cut shiny render UI UI with BS. So when we run that, we can see the we can see the raw HTML code in which uh, we we have used uh, to to build 
our app. I think uh, there is a function here in which, let me close this, where here we can have UI. Let me define it here. Here we have title, title panel. We can say demo, demo app. Here we have BS, BS lib, BS underscore team. Okay, BS underscore team. Mm. Let me put this here. BS underscore team version, I think five. Uh, boost watch. Let's say we have dark. We have dark, darkly. So I said this is my team. Okay. So I've defined the team in the server. Then I have BS lib. BS. BS or BS underscore team underscore underscore preview. So we want uh, team is equals to a team team. So when I run this, it's just going to start a shiny app, uh, which is going to show us uh, this default team uh, in which we want to apply to build the UI of our shiny app. So it's going to show us that default team uh, in which I have defined still coming up. So it's going to show us uh, the default team. We can see the default team for Darkly. You can see the input panel. You can see the foreground color is using this color. Uh, you can see the ascent color. We can see the best fonts. This is the best fonts. So once we now see this, uh, we can now decide to style this uh, UI uh, based on what we expect. Maybe I said, yeah, I'm, I don't want to use darkly. Maybe I want to use flatly. It's going to restart the app. It's going to restart, refresh the app. It's going to apply that team. It's taking time, maybe because of the Zoom. Yeah. So it's when we use flatly, we can see that if we render the site, we, we updated the site. So then now, if we are now satisfied that this is the actual team that I want to use to build my shiny app, then we now apply that team. We now apply that team uh, to the UI. I don't know if there are any questions before I leave uh, this. Are there any questions relating to this? Not so, so it looks interesting that we can change the themes in the UI. Uh, yes, we can yeah. use this shiny app now. We customize it. Uh, we can use it. We now apply that particular team to our UI, uh, which will be because uh, we need mm -hmm. to spend some time in the design. This is the design to make the app in which we want to present to our audience to make it more robust. Okay, so that is yeah. that for the CSS part. So now this part is about uh, the layouts of the shiny app. Just like we just saw in the shiny, default shiny app is just a single page, uh, but we, maybe we want to build, we need to be able to customize the app to have multiple page, different tab panel. So we need to, we need to dig in deep into the layer. We can use the flute page, which is always the default app. This is just going to give us uh, the, the default app, which we have a single page, but we can set the page to a fixed page. So this fixed page means that as we build the app, it's going to fit into maybe into the screen, uh, with which we are the viewer, the width is going to fit in. We can also use the field page. Uh, and, and the more powerful, robust one, they also talk about the sidebar layout, load row, and also column. So this sidebar layouts, we can also, within the sidebar layouts, we can define different sidebar panel. So within that sidebar panel in the Shiny app, uh, we are going to have, we are going to have various inputs. Various inputs is going to go into that layout. 
just as an example, let me go back to the book and show an example what they mean by those sidebar layouts. There is a visual in which I want to show. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we have the full flute page. We have the title here. We have the sidebar layouts, which is going to be here. Then the sidebar panel. Within this sidebar panel, we can have our various inputs. Then we have here the main panel where all our outputs, we can specify all our outputs uh, within uh, the main panel uh, of the Shiny app. And within this float uh, row for function, we can specify different dimension for both column and rows, just as they explain here, just as they do explain here. Yeah, where they has the float page, they have float row. This column, they have four column here. They also have eight uh, rows here. They also have float row column. We have six, we also have six. So when we render this, it's just going to give us this uh, default uh, shiny app uh, in which we are seeing here. But we can also have multi page layouts uh, in the UI function. So this can be achieved using the navbar page. Navbar page, which is like a navigation page where we can navigate this tab. We are showing different things to the user. If you click again, we, it will take us uh, uh, to another page. But the drawback uh, for this navbar page, I think they talk about uh, there is limit because of uh, there is a limit. So uh, is always arranged horizontally. Uh, we can also achieve, we can also overcome, we can also uh, switch and use what we call the navbar menu. This navbar menu is just going to give us a drop down. Within this drop down, we can have different tabs in those drop down. We can also have navbar list, which is going to be like a list of our which is similar to what we have in the navbar menu. I think we'll see that if there is an example like that in the book. Let me copy that, that example. Uh -huh. This one is about the top set panel. Uh, here we have imports. Here we have set parameters. Here we have visualize uh, results. Uh, it's just going to give us different uh, top uh, panel. This imports, this relates to importing upload the data. We do some set some parameters, we do some visualization. Uh, and this one we can specify different tab panel. And we can also tell when a user selects a specific tab panel. Maybe the user is selecting the first one, it will display that in the final output, which is for this example, the default the user is just selecting. Uh, the first parameter items in the app. So for the navigation bar list, this is just going to be like a list where we have nav bar list ID, which is a tab set. So like heading one, we have tab panel, panel one, which is panel one contents will go here. So the nav bar list is just going to give us a drop down. You have this is heading one, this is panel one. This is heading two, this is panel two, uh, this is uh, panel uh, three. So let's me go back uh, to the notes. Okay. I don't know, are there questions uh, relating to this navigation bar? Yeah, looks all interesting. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we might want to show uh, the outputs and the inputs uh, in different tabs. And yeah, this looks nice so far. Okay, thank you. So we go to case study. Okay, they look at some case study uh, in which uh, they use, uh, they have app01.r, which is the first app they use as some code. They were looking at the stack R, which eagerly is a package which obtain data from stack overflow. Uh, we have the UX which is a uh, visual style is boring. Maybe it should look more like stack overflow. Uh, could input some user rather than ID. So we look at this example. We load some packages in which we want to use. We have make word cloud, which is a function. This function takes uh, one input. 
then we have WIT, then DF, uh, we have our word cloud. So words is tag name, frequency is answer score, minimum frequency is zero, then colors, we are using our color viewer, six purpose, uh, then scales, we specify the scales. Then for the UI, we are using the default float page. This is the title of the app. This is the sidebar layout, sidebar panel. So this is the inputs, all the inputs, they are going here. Okay, then this is the output, which is the word cloud app in which we want to build. Then for the server, the server is a function. We have inputs, we have outputs, we have stack data. We make the data to be reactive. Then we say stack R, stack users. We have inputs, which is user ID. We have top tags. Then we have output, word cloud. We have render plots, uh, make word cloud, which will be stack data. So when we when we run the app, so let's see how, how we can that's, run. Sorry, that's interesting. I thought previously that if we have a, a word cloud, we would render it with render word cloud. Um, yes. Not render plot. Or is it word cloud too, which is different from word cloud? Uh, yeah. Let's see the server again. Yeah, it's they saying render, render, render they, plot. Let's see that example. Let me stop this up. Paste it here. Shiny word cloud. Oh, I did not have word cloud, so I have to install it. Okay. Yeah, it will be that uh, for the word cloud too, is where we use. Uh, a render word cloud, but for uh, okay. just word cloud without word cloud too. But, yeah. Word cloud. Yeah. Probably this one renders just in using render plot. Is there still a Do I have stack R? Yep. Mm. I do not have stack R. Yeah. Stock. Oh, it's from GitHub. Uh, <laughs> I think I need to search for stock R. Mm. Uh, from GitHub. Where is your GitHub repo? I think it's this. Yeah. Oh, is it this? Yep. So I just grab this. Yep. Yeah. That's it, the Lord. So I'll just pick three. I'm not interested in yeah. dating mm -hmm. or three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Update, update, update. Yeah, I noted it because during the um the ER case study in chapter three. Yes. Um I used word cloud two to render the text from the okay. So maybe we can proceed. Yeah, we can proceed. Why that is still installing? Yeah. Ah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. that I think that is the end. So maybe let's just see. We can use.
end it here, then ah, it's still loading. Maybe we can just discuss. I think that is the end uh, of all we had for this chapter. It's all about layout team. So we have looked at how we can use uh, Bootstrap uh, to style to style the UI uh, of our Shiny app, which is very useful. We also look at how we can add navigation bar mm -hmm. uh, to the UI of the Shiny app. Yeah. We look at how we can, uh, how Shiny, uh, how we can pass in raw HTML code. We can use with the help of the HTML tools. Uh, we can mm -hmm. see how Shiny uh, uh, is playing. I think that is everything we have uh, for this chapter, I don't know if there are any comments or contribution or further things in which you want us uh, to discuss about the chapter. I see that you have your hand up, Whitecliff. I don't know if you want to comment something. I know that that was just appreciation. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yes, uh, from my part, I don't have any questions? I think everything is clear on the chapter and in your presentation. As Whitecliff already mentioned, all this is very, very useful, very interesting how you can change and like to set up all of these kind of things with your Shiny app. Yeah. It, it was a really good presentation as always, Alua Fermi. I don't know if Whitecliff wants to say something. Uh, not much from my side. Um, I'm not very conversant with HTML or CSS, but looking at how they can improve on the look of the UI, I think I might give them some time to <laughs> improve my shiny app. Yeah. Yes, I think I agree with you. I think the BS Lib give us like a starter. We can start uh, with the BS Lib package where we can preview the, the given team in which uh, we mm -hmm. want to use. Then from there, uh, mm -hmm. we can start building up from there on look at. Sure. Okay, so I don't know if maybe do you want us to wait or for it to stop, to stop downloading to the package. Seems to be taking quite a while. But for, for, from the presentation, that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me write stop. <laughs>